Hafidi Toduhamsu, thank you for your participation in today's virtual public hearing. This virtual public hearing is convened by the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Haganya Revitalization, Self-Determination, and Regional Affairs. For the record, in accordance with the open government law, public hearing notices were given to all senators, stakeholders, and all main media broadcasting outlets, with the first notice being issued on Wednesday, October 7th, 2020, and the second notice on Tuesday, October 13th, 2020. The public notice for today's virtual public hearing was also posted on the legislature's website at www.guamlegislature.org. The time is now 5.35. This virtual public hearing is now called to order. Siduas Maasi for your virtual attendance to this evening's virtual hearing. Today's virtual public hearing is to hear and receive public testimony on bill number 402-35 COR, an act to authorize the extension of the term of the lease between the Department of Parks and Recreation and the Guam Football, in parentheses, Soccer Association for a term of up to 20 years. I would like to acknowledge that we have uh, two senators with us today. We have Speaker Moon, uh, Tina Rose Munya Barnes. So uh, this is her bill. I'll be handing it over to her in just a little bit. And we also have the minority leader, uh, Senator, Senator Talu Taidegui. So uh, along with this, um, I will allow or have uh, Speaker Munya Barnes when she introduces her bill to also introduce uh, the members who are present here to testify. So the general rules for virtual public hearing. Again, thank you so much for joining me. Before we open discussions from participants of this virtual public hearing, following the agenda was made available at the virtual link posted within the committee's communication provided to confirm hearing participants. I'd like to first provide some general rules of conduct for all of those who are participating and in attendance. The conduct of this virtual public hearing shall be as follows. One, all participants must abide by rules of conduct and quality assurance standards, including broadcasting from a quiet room with little to no interruptions. The use of virtual backgrounds is not permitted. Broadcasting from a room with adequate lighting specifically to ensure that a participant's face is not backlit, but visible at all times when speaking. Please ensure that you are unmuted and that you are speaking clearly into your microphone when you have been called upon. The chair will recognize individuals who have been confirmed as participants. Individuals providing oral testimony shall first be recognized by the chair, or in this case, the bill author, before speaking and shall state their name and title for record keeping purposes. The order of questioning will begin with the panel of senators who shall complete a line of questioning by asking one question apiece. And then we will go to a, uh, another round of questions if uh, there are still follow-up questions. Oral testimonies received shall be confined to the substance of the issues on the agenda. The personal inference as to the character of a senator or any individual testifying is not permitted. Any violation of this general rule of conduct will result in removal from the virtual public hearing by the host. I ask that all participants keep their comments or testimony to within five minutes. This virtual public hearing will follow the agenda made available with the emailed virtual public hearing notices and notification of participation sent to everyone in attendance. We will now begin this virtual public hearing and at this time, I will have Speaker Tina Rose Muna Barnes, who is the sponsor of Bill 402-35 COR, provide her introductory remarks and become the moderator for this virtual public hearing. Speaker Tina Muna Barnes, please proceed. 
Si Julius Mossi, uh, Senator and Kelly Marsh Tyson, and Dr. Linus si Julius Mossi for giving me the opportunity to share the perspective on this bill uh, 402 35 COR. And thank you for reading the title. But uh, I just want to say uh, to everyone on this Zoom public hearing and to our international uh, FIFA family and friends, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule uh, to being here. And I know you'll introduce your names and your titles uh, from the FIFA family and then give your presentation. So uh, for all of you there uh, from the international FIFA family, you're all more than welcome to speak at this evening's presentation. So let me start mine. Many of God's blessings to all of you here this evening. And thank you again, Madam Chair, for uh, literally taking the time to see the importance of this bill and, and uh, see how we can facilitate this uh, moving uh, forward. This bill will authorize the Department of Parks and Recreation to extend their lease with the Guam Football Association for up to 20 years at the Southern Field uh, and the Dedido Field here on our island of Guam. The extension will allow for the Guam uh, Football Association to ascertain more grants with the Federation International Day Football Association, which we will call the FIFA uh, family, to further develop our infrastructure as well as develop our youth. This partnership between the government and GFA has been a win-win solution and a great investment in our community. GFA has not only developed and improved government property into something the community is proud of with little government funding, but they have developed our youth, getting them physically active, as well as family as they spend more time with one another. The GFA here on Guam has a proven record of success in our community, and I hope that we can continue to create more partnerships like with our private sector uh, in the future. I want to thank the director uh, of um, Parks and Recreation, and I think the deputies on also for being here this evening. I want to thank the Guam Football Association uh, uh, leaders uh, for being here, as they're the ones who truly drive uh, this uh, component so that the development of, of soccer that we call here football in the international arena, as they develop that this game of sport the partnerships that we bring in, the public-private partnerships that we bring in from the international uh, region and the resources that are brought into the community has truly blessed and embraced the people of Guam. We have been able to have international play uh, and, and our beautiful island of Guam shown uh, across the globe. Uh, we've had our own team uh, being uh, recognized and um, I want to say with a commitment, uh, having had the opportunity to see Mr. Nico, and I know that you'll go ahead and do some pr presentation here. I wanna uh, take the time to thank you uh, for literally uh, working with uh, Santino and, and the Soccer Association to come here uh, into the legislature to hear what we have uh, uh, to say, but more importantly, to hear what you have to say about how well Guam does in the international arena as we promote not just the sport of football, soccer uh, for Guam, but within the world. And um, your support uh, continues uh, to not go unnoticed because the reception that we have and the collaboration that we have, even with the Department of Education and the preliminary talks about integrating uh, even fields into every single school on island. And I know that's a tall order that I, I, it's a vision that I'm dreaming. And I know that GFA is really happy. This is a start and more than a start because we have kept people, children active. We have kept uh, children and, and players and athletes and even partner up with different sports to be, uh, to have a collaboration with the utilization of the field, but just the true partnerships. And uh, I'm just so impressed and humbled at the fact that I'm in some way or another helping in a little way to facilitate this. So Madam Chair, if I may, I'd like to open up the floor uh, to our, our um, Guam president of the Football Association. And I would like to him to you, but I do apologize, excuse me, 
pardon my, my uh, disrespect for the agency and the administration. We do have the Department of uh, Parks and Rec, Mr. Roquel Contra. And uh, sir, um, if I may, Mr. Sengil, uh, ask uh, and give courtesy to uh, Mr. Roquel Contra as the Director of Parks and Recs and his team to say a few words in support or not in support of the bill and see how we can move forward from them if it's okay with you. So thank you, Madam Chair, again, and I'll yield the floor to uh, Mr. Rocky Alcantara. And like the chairman said, please state your name, where you're from, and if you support the bill or not, and then you can present your presentation. Thank you and God bless. Uh, Mr. Alcantara. Good evening, uh, speaker, senators, and uh, special guests from FIFA. Also, um, Mr. Uh, Isiki. Uh, my name is Roki Alcantara. I'm from uh, Mangilao. I'm now the, uh, the Parks and Recreation Director. And uh, I've met with the, uh, the FIFA organization uh, here in Guam. And we actually discussed uh, this uh, issue about the, uh, the uh, soccer organization. And so uh, I do uh, support their intention as far as the, you know, the extension, uh, I am also with sports all my life. So I do support this, uh, anything for the, uh, the betterment of the sports community and also for our, our uh, children participation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Alcantara and Mr. Vigigomis, are you here for support uh, with your director as deputy or you uh, would like to say a few words? Yeah, yes, Madam Speaker. I um, offer a good evening, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> uh, speaker, senators, special guests. Um, yes, I'm here supporting my director and I stand by uh, whatever his decision is with this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vigigomis. Uh, and uh, Mr. S uh, Valentino Sengil, uh, please, the floor is yours. Uh, thanks, Tino, for being here this evening. Oh, you are on mute. You are on mute. Okay. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can okay. hear you. My name is Valentino Sengil, but everyone just calls me Tino. Okay. I'm the president, I'm from Manilao, and I'm also the president of the Guam Football Association. So this, uh, this bill, uh, Guam Football is in favor. Um, there's a lot of things that carries with this bill because, you know, we first started um, with FIFA. I mean, GFA became a member of FIFA in 1996. And at that time, we had nothing. So... There was no fields, but the president uh, before Seth Blatter started this thing called Go Projects. And in 19, I mean, 2006, we first started our Go Project. And the first thing that we built was our home. So without a home, you know, you can't have football. So up to now we have had six Go Projects through the FIFA funding program. And it came out to $6.3 million. So this is a lot of money that has been poured into this island and it helps us to promote our sport here. The other thing that we're looking at is that we need more property. And so we looked at properties in Agate, uh, we looked at properties at Chalampago and Talafofo. But today we're talking about the extension of the lease. The lease here in Harmon will be up in 2029. So we only have nine more years for this lease to expire. The lease over in Agate has 19 more years, but according to the FIFA board program, we have to have a minimum of 20 years to start projects. So we, we lost a year, I guess, because of this pandemic, we, we were not able to fulfill the contract. So you know, FIFA is asking us to see if we can go back up to 20 years. There is already money set aside uh, for the Agate project. I think we set aside $1.2 million to put in an artificial turf, a natural grass fence, uh, and a parking lot. So that will serve the community of the Southern part 
of the western part or yeah, the western part of the island. Okay. Halafofo will serve the eastern part of the island. But so the other thing that we're looking at is in Harman is that we're looking also that we need to change off our lights to LED to be more uh, efficient, uh, energy efficient. And also we're looking at changing our artificial turf because now it's time that you know it's reached its capacity. So these are the things that PIFA is able to support. You know, they can they can support us by giving us the funds to do all these projects. And it doesn't cost the government any money. And everything that we that we do here, you know, we get grants from AFC, from FIFA, and from other countries. So this is a win-win for our island. We, uh, it helps to promote our sport. It helps to uh, we can send our athletes to college. And also it brings um, recognition to Guam of the international uh, uh, tournaments that we bring here. So there's lots of things that Guam football can do for Guam. And I know a speaker that you've seen that when we do international matches, there is a big uh, networking of uh, like ESPN coming over to uh, to film the matches and broadcast it live worldwide. So those are the things that one football can share with the community, and you know it brings a lot of pride to this island. So thank you again for for introducing the bill, and we hope that you know you can consider to extend the lease. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Tino, for that. And uh, Madam Chair, if I may, I'm just going to say that the program said that Tino has uh, worked closely with the GFA family, uh, international family, has literally brought the collaboration of many, uh, uh, re uh, many uh, other island nations around this region. And, and I'm hoping that with this continued effort, as we continue to make Guam the, the showcase uh, for this part of the region and, and how beautiful our, our facilities can be with the support of the FIFA family. I know that this will truly be the win-win because um, as the leader in this uh, uh, blue continent of ours in this region, uh, I think that the FIFA family understands that, that, that the more we train, the more we give opportunity, the better athletes and the better uh, our, our, our younger generation can grow up to be. And so with that being said, I'd like to yield and, and I hope I'm not doing any disrespect to the FIFA family, but I, I know that Nico, I know Nico personally. So if you can help me just introduce your team and all three of you are allowed to speak and you can start uh, 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 the presentation right now from your end. You are on mute, please unmute. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Very, very kind words uh, given to the football family, uh, to FIFA, to Guam, FA. And I would like to first uh, introduce ourselves and I'll introduce my colleagues. Uh, as you mentioned, you have met uh, Nico previously. And when he came back from the mission from Guam, he had, a, he had a lot of good things to say. And my other colleague, CJ, has been to Guam as well, so I'm the only unlucky one not to be in Guam, and I'm looking forward to come to Guam once this pandemic is over. So let me first introduce myself. My name is Lavin Vignesh, and I'm the FIFA Regional Development Manager uh, for Southeast Asia and East Asia. And as you're aware, Nico is on my, on my left. He's the project manager for the same region. And CJ, or Chen Jun, he's also the project manager for the office. Just a small brief on what are we. Uh, but we are a small office located in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Uh, we are one of the tenth of the regional office uh, based in Malaysia. There are other regional offices around the world. Uh, our office are responsible for 21 countries, which includes uh, the special island in Guam. And um, that's from my side. Uh, I would like to also give a slight brief introduction on the development program 
so the the audience and also the the, the, the senators and then Madam Speaker, you are aware of where we come from. So just a brief introduction, uh, the forward program or also known as the FIFA development program is a program uh, that was introduced in 2016. Uh, previously, as, as Tino has mentioned, it was called the Gold Project. Now it's called the Forward Project under the leadership of our president, Gianni Infantino. And we will, if you allow me, Madam Speaker, if I could uh, probably present you two or three slides, uh, would that be possible? Or would you just like me to run through uh, orally? Right. You can you, you can present, sir. Right. While, while we get the technicalities of uh, trying to share our screen, uh, I'll just go through what the forward program is. So the forward program is basically a program where uh, it's tailor-made uh, to the member association. So in this case, the Guam Football Association um, needs and priorities. And the forward program itself focuses on infrastructure projects around the world, not only in Guam. And the allocation of funds in this instance uh, for Guam FA alone, the remaining balance is approximately 3.5 million US dollars. Mm -hmm. And we are really looking forward to use these funds uh, to, to, to develop and also to expand the remaining infrastructure or footballing infrastructure in Guam. Uh, I understand that, this, that the bill presented today uh, it's consisting of uh, requesting for an extension for a 20 year lease. And I would like to support uh, the, the request from Guam FA on behalf of FIFA uh, for, the sole, uh, for the sole purpose that the forward program is regulated by a forward regulation. And we have a regulation which clearly stipulates that in order for FIFA to uh, fund these infrastructure projects, a 20-year lease is the minimum requirement. So I understand in Agat we have a 19-year lease. Uh, we are slightly behind by a year. And hence, we have requested uh, President Tino and Guam football family uh, to try and extend the lease in order for FIFA to provide these funds. As uh, Tino mentioned earlier, uh, these funds are non-payable. You don't have to pay back to FIFA. It's all yours. It's all Guam FAs and Guam football's family. Uh, we will be monitoring the project from, from, from a FIFA point of view, but we would like to also echo what the FIFA president uh, has echoed in many times before, that what is important is football infrastructure. We need to see young boys, young girls, to have a platform to go somewhere and, and to play football. So I'm very happy to be, to be part of this uh, public hearing today. And I'm very happy that Guam Football Association has, has taken uh, worked very hard. We've actually been working almost a year. I think Nico has been there uh, trying to get things done. And we've been working every day and it's been made even more difficult with the pandemic. But we are here today to, to, to talk about this. And I'm glad and, I'm, and I want to support Guam FA Football Association. Uh, and I would like to uh, support this bill as well. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, so Mr. Levant, would any of your colleagues like to also do a presentation or will your presentation suffice? I think my presentation will suffice. We actually uh, made a PowerPoint presentation, but we had some difficulty sharing it. Uh, You're to, to you, send it. You if have it's permission from the host to share the screen, to share the screen yeah. But I don't think it's really necessary because I think I've encapsulated whatever I needed to, whatever is in the presentation with my oral testimony. Yeah. I, I, I must say to you, uh, 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 Mr. Levin, Levin, that when I saw the programs uh, with uh, the Guam Football Association, I was so intrigued and honored by the fact that the uh, program that included even persons uh, from the Special Olympics and the mothers of the kids who were training and playing football, 
that they even created a league for mothers. And I know that Senator Tello Taidegui and I could share with that because even in our years today, uh, that we know that a special uh, athletes always at heart, that we know that having a league with mothers uh, in that was uh, came with uh, a very big support from the island of Guam. And, and uh, as the vice chair of this committee uh, with uh, Senator uh, Marsh Taitino, we're looking at a um, 3.1 uh, investment in return, the development of training not just a thousand, but thousands of kids and the vision of even trying to extend that even further. These, not just these two projects, but even the dream that we have to integrate it in to the, into the different villages, the same way we did with baseball. And I know the director of Parks and Recs can share the same sentiment because he too was a part of making baseball happen in every village on the island. That is my vision with Guam Football Association, but it needs to start somewhere. And the commitment of, 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 of sharing the resources, you got to believe that the return of the investment is even greater. So with that being said, uh, I'd like to yield uh, to, back to the chair uh, woman to see if she has any questions and then to our minority leader uh, for her questions to this body. So uh, Madam Chair, the floor is back for, to you at this time to ask any uh, increase. As to do this, speaker. Yes, the first question I was going to ask is, um, you know, I'm all for getting to things early, but uh, it did surprise me a little having nine years early. And so that was answered um, that in order to avail of the additional support, and we're very grateful for any support that we can get from outside um, that the least needs to be 20 years or more. And that's understandable. If an investment is going to be made, we want to make sure, or FIFA wants to make sure it's an investment that will stand a good period of time and, and give them the proper return. So um, I am also interested in understanding uh, where we're at. So there have been a couple of public laws over the years. And just where we're at with some of the conditions, uh, just to provide that context. So in one of the earlier provisions, I believe it had mentioned that there, there is an understanding or an agreement about admissions. Where are we with that? Are admissions charged sometimes? And with the Department of Parks and Recreation and the government of Guam, uh, can you outline how those operate at this time? Senator, oh. can you hear? Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay, so Senator, at this time, we don't charge admission for the, the for entrance into GFA. The only time we charge admission is only for the high school matches. Uh, the reason being is that because the high school has no funding to, to run the championship. So they asked us to run the championship provided that we take all the funding from the gate receipts uh, to be used to pay for like the power, the referee, the trophies. And also we had to pay the GRT. So this, uh, this admission that we charge for the uh, high school, GFA or Guam football, does not take any profit from it. It's solely spent for this uh, for this tournament. Okay, and that helps. You know what what is good is to get clarity so that we understand where we're at. And not charging admission generally is good because this means that we're making it available for our public and getting the youth going, getting uh, people involved in sports, even as spectators, it's all important for uh, dealing with, well, a variety of things, right? It's, it's good health-wise, it's good for promoting healthy communities and tackling some of our social problems. Um, sports teams bonding, uh, that is always a very, very positive force in these sorts of issues. So um, 
with that, I'll, I'll go ahead. It, are we doing this? Did you want us to go in rounds or just, I, I think I only really have yeah. one other question. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, and just uh, in looking at the history of this also, again, just for clarification, because there have been a couple of laws, it's, it, these have been going on for a while. Um, where are we, if you know, and if not, I'll be contacting Gita anyway, but um, do you know where we're at with the tax credits that have come with these different agreements for so, this, this field? Okay, so for the, uh, so you're talking about like the matching funds, is that basically yes. what you're, okay. So the matching funds, um, the government did not fulfill the matching funds. So we're still short from the matching funds of 600,000, okay? Mm -hmm. So the government has not, we've tried in the past to, um, to request for the matching funds, but we were never successful. So now we kind of like abandon it because we know the finances of the government is not in a great shape. So that's why we reached out to other, uh, you know, to AFC, the Asian Football Confederation. We went back to FIFA and see what other available funds we can use to utilize to build our infrastructure. So at this time, we're not gonna pursue the 600,000 that is still left over from that matching fund. Okay, and so um, with this, I'm, I'm looking at this for the, the tax credits. And so um, I'll just have to look at this a, a little bit more closely to understand the tax credits, because uh, I think the matching funds is a different section. So it says the tax credits provided uh, shall be matched dollar for do dollar. Yeah, for that's dollar. So, that's, yes. so yes. you were able to come up with uh, about 600,000 in tax credits, and then it's the matching part that you're saying that didn't. The Material. Yeah, the, yeah, so we were able to get the 600,000 from like, like from FIFA, but the government was not able to match. They said that they didn't have the funding. Uh, BBMR says, no, we, we don't have the funding to match it. So what we did was we, we had to look elsewhere, you know, to finish up our projects. So just to let you know, the Agate property has in the law that $200,000 has to be used from that matching fund to, to build infrastructure in Agate. But we're not gonna be using that because we're, you know, we're using the FIFA money now to, to uh, facilitate that development down there. Okay, so those are the questions that I had for now, unless anybody else wanted to uh, weigh in. I don't think, with the director, he's very new and uh, he he will probably take note of this and follow up on some of it himself. Sure. But um, yeah, those are the two questions I had right now. And then if I can uh, ask another, if anything, up uh, speaker. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Minority Leader, uh, Senator Chadigui, do you have any questions or comments? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for the opportunity to speak. And. Um, I'd like to say, uh, you know, Roki, I had to be here tonight because I know you're going to be here and I want to keep my streak on, on meeting you with you once a week. <laughs> but I'm glad to see that Victor's here. You know, I haven't seen you, Victor. I know he's got you really busy. And thank you for being here too as well to support your director in this endeavor. And um, of course, Mr. Sangil, it's good to see you as well. And to our visiting guest, Hafade from the island of Guam. I have to ask, where are you at located at right now? Uh, we are currently in Malaysia. In Malaysia. Oh, that's not that bad. We're only, what, how many hours? Two hours or? Two hours behind you guys. Yeah. Okay. So it's not that bad. Okay. So I think we're, we're not going to feel so bad keeping you a little bit longer. So yeah. <laughs> thank, you. thank you for being here and thank you for supporting Guam as well. You know, I, I, for a listening audience, people are just trying to figure out, wow, this is 20 year lease. This is awfully long for anything in the government of Guam to to allow this to, to go through, but there's a history behind this. And I was wondering, Roki, have you had a chance to look at like the public law 21-29 that first created the, the name of the field and then back in 1997 when the bill was first uh, uh, put into place to allow the, um, the uh, lease of this? I think 
I, I don't know if you have any history to kind of give us a play by play on, on how we got here today, how it first began. I'd be a, a speaker, you know, Senator Ben Pangolinan was a, a major advocate, you know, for putting this, this facility together or, or putting this up. In fact, I think one of the bills uh, he, he authored on it. But just for the listening audience to understand something is 20 years when it doesn't even expire in, until, you know, 2029. And then we have the agate uh, scenario situation, you know, uh, I do understand the reason why from FIFA, but it, Roki, if you don't, uh, just whatever you know so far is fine. You know, just let us know that what requirements that uh, the Guam Football Association has to abide by, um, things like that. Uh, they fulfilled their obligations. Um, as stipulated in the law that created uh, the opportunity for them, um, not only with the, like Senator Marsh mentioned about the um, uh, requirements or the conditions uh, where they met, things like that, just to know that FIFA, is, uh, not FIFA, but uh, Guam Federation football is in good standing, you know, to okay. the community. Um, I've got some, uh, some answers. Uh, of course, the, uh, there was a license agreement uh, with the uh, Parks and Rec and uh, the uh, Guam Football Soccer Association. And according to uh, public law 24-33, okay, this was the uh, authorization to enter into a, a license agreement for 30 years. Uh, the License agreement was signed by the director of Parks and Rec and also uh, uh, the uh, acting governor, Madeline Bordalio. So this uh, lease agreement is for 30 years and the uh, lease was for a dollar a year. The 30, uh, 30 years, uh, the $30 was already paid for. Uh, for the for the lease, you know, for early in a, every year's uh, lease. So uh, then, in uh, 19 back in 19 um, well, actually back in 2014, there was also. Uh, uh, MOA with the Parks and Rec and the Football uh, Association, South Africa's Football Association, uh, for the lease of land down in Agate uh, for uh, up to 25 years, and the lease expires at, uh, on uh, 2039. This was a MOA between Parks and Rec and the uh, office of the mayor of Agate, uh, Carol Tayama. It was signed uh, January uh, 27, 2014. So with all those uh, uh, agreements, uh, you know, the concern was in the beginning was, you know, the, the lease has not expired yet, but uh, if the law is passed, then uh, I, I do not accept, uh, what do you call that? I do not. Uh, uh, object. I do not object to, to the, uh, continuation of this uh, agreement. Thank, thank you, Roki. Thank you for that uh, little bit of history on how it's moving forward. Um, my next question would be to FIFA. Um, because the lease agreement that was done in Public Law 24-33 for the Harmon Field, it was a lease agreement. Um, however, the one in Agate, I'm not sure, uh, Mr. Sangil, if there's any money coming from FIFA to assist you with the Agate facility. 
Um, but because it's not a lease agreement and only an MOA, would that make a difference uh, for FIFA if it's an MOA? For Agate, that is, not the Harmon one. Because this bill basically, yeah, it, it says for both of both areas. Actually, no one scratch that. It does, right, uh, Madam Speaker? Your bill does say for both areas, Harmon and Agate? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we're going from an MOU to a legal lease agreement, you know, so it, we're not, my concern is with Agate, it was an MOA, you know, or yeah, MOA, but with the one for Harmon was a lease agreement. So I'm not quite sure legally, you know, if we're, we're going to do this on renewal, so, so in other words, there, there's just some legal, legal legality here that I want to make sure it's clear because, you know, I, I support this, of course. I'm, I'm like you, Madam Speaker. We're both athletes and a biggest fan. And I think the, the multiplier on, on uh, the community, um, what we're getting back for this is, you know, beyond what we can afford right now, but we're getting it back from FIFA that's been so kind to invest into Guam. And, and build it up. But I just want to make sure, uh, Mr. Sengil, that, that, and Madam Speaker, that this is an agreement to extend on a lease with Harmon, but there was no lease. It was an MOU with the one in Agate. No. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's just something to look into. Maybe the, during the committee of the committee on uh, chair, when you guys go through it, that you can, the legal side of it, we can look into it. And I can ask Tino if he'd like to add before I, I share my sure. sentiments. Okay. Sentiment. So, so we've been going back and forth about MOU and lease agreement. But if you read the, what do you call it, the, uh, the lease agreement, on the back page, it says this, this lease agreement is the MOU. And, you know, we had this back and forth even with the public auditor. She's, uh, she said, oh, this is not a lease agreement because it has to have an MOU, but in the back side of the, uh, where the signature part, it says there, this lease agreement is the MOU. So we can, we can show you, we'll bring the documents and we'll clarify. It's, it states there in the uh, lease agreement. Okay, because that's, go ahead, speaker, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, I'm to share with you that, that based on that, I, um, uh, uh, Director Rocky Alcantara will be submitting documents so that we can append it to the journal. And I know that uh, 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 FIFA, I mean, uh, GFA here on Guam also has their copy and it's the same. And uh, either which way, if you can send it electronically, we'll go ahead and append it to the journal. But Department of Parks and Recs, uh, on an earlier conversation this week, offered that they he would transmit the copies to me if he didn't already do that. Okay. Uh Okay, thank you so much for that. And, and I think it's gonna be very helpful as we debate this on the floor because a question will be asked about that. The, the last thing I have is with regarding, FI, uh, this is to FIFA. Um, you stated that you need at least an agreement at least for 20 years in order to provide any kind of grant funding um, for, um, for Guam. That's for Guam. Is this actually a requirement for all areas that it's a 20 year lease agreement? Thank you, Senator Tello, for your question. I'll go back to your previous question before I come to the, to the next question. Okay. In terms of whether it's a lease agreement or an MOA or an MO, FIFA side, we make it quite lenient because this is development funds. We don't want to really go into the legality of the document itself. In the regulation, it just states an agreement confirming a free provision of the use of the land for 20 years. It could be a lease, it could be an MOU, it could even be a donation from either the government or a, or a third party. But the, 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 the legality in the forward regulation says an agreement. So I hope that answers your question. So whether it's going to be a lease or an MOU on, from a FIFA point of view, uh, it's not re we don't really um, take it in a strict manner. So as long as you have an agreement that says that GFA has the pre free provision to use that land to build, whether it's a soccer pitch 
or, or any other footballing infrastructure, we are more than satisfied uh, with that. So I hope that answered your first question. It did. Thank you so much. The second, and, and yeah, the second question on whether the twenty-year requirement is uh, whether it's only specifically for Guam or across the globe. Uh, we are all binded by the same regulations, uh, so it's across two hundred eleven countries with these twenty-year um, land requirements. And just for just for your information, there are some countries where land. It's very scarce. Uh, this, for instance, you have Maldives, Hong Kong, yeah. Singapore, and, 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 and the difficulties to get a 20 year lease there sometimes could be uh, even more greater than what, where we are now in Guam. But uh, we still uh, have a strict compliance with it uh, in relation to the 20 year requirement for the sole reason that we are spending a lot of money. Uh, and the money is not for us, it's just to see young boys and young girls. Uh, able to play football and play soccer as the same Guam. And uh, so I hope that answers your question itself. So 20 year lease is for all 211 member associations without exception. Yes, it does. Thank you so very much for that. And thank you for being lenient when it comes to MOA and MOU. That's, that's really nice to know, you know, um, but I greatly appreciate your participation uh, for you being here and most especially your contribution to the island of Guam. You know, we welcome it. Uh, FIFA has gone a long way, or football in Guam has gone a long way. I think it's exceeding uh, some of those other sports like volleyball, my favorite, <laughs> you know, and other places, even baseball, you know. <laughs> There's more of a, a liking to those now, you know. Oh, my gosh. But anyways, uh, and I, I think it's attributed to your kind and generosity to the island. So thank you again so much, uh, Mr. Sangil. Keep up the good work. Um, uh, looking forward to um, all the games once this COVID comes up. And uh, thank you again, Director and Deputy Director. Victor, it's always good to see you too, sir. Take care now. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Minority Leader. And before I yield back to the Chairman, uh, I want to say again, as, as Vice Chair of this committee and wanting to see this bill get facilitated forward uh, to the FIFA family uh, in our language, and Dunklin Asizus Masi, thank you for um, believing in Guam and believing that the development resources that you provide for this island, that the training and development and the building upon, not just for the athletes or for the children, but the family in general uh, have come together. I have firsthand seen it. Um, I like to say, I wish I played on the field personally, but I have my children who play on the field today. Uh, my son, I think, is still with the Chalampago disasters. And uh, though they're not the number one team, uh, they still play. Um, I have been very, very impressed with the leagues that have gone on there. I've been very, very impressed with the collaboration of a lot of the other sports that come together to not just utilize, but to share in the camaraderie ship of what football has to offer on a regional and, and worldwide uh, uh, exposure. And I think that as we continue to do this, and as Nico also had firsthand uh, coming and CJ firsthand coming here and seeing what the program's done, seeing the educational training and discipline that in order for you to, to grow and learn and, and be active in the sport, you also have to train the mind. You also have to do your homework. You also have to do good in school and you have to be disciplined with respect, respect for your elders, respect for your fellow athletes, uh, colleagues, but more importantly, uh, respect for the community. And I, I see that with all the teams. I see that in all the games that I've watched, all the world international games that I've watched there. And I think that uh, I have literally wanted to facilitate the vision that former Speaker Ben Pangilinan uh, saw when he supported these efforts. And he made me his co-sponsor in the public law 30-3 and some others, because he saw that if we build it, they will come. And uh, you know, this, this uh, vision of wanting to see more fields built, I, I truly think it takes that collaborative effort. And we've been really tight on resources, but 
the FIFA family, the international family has been very, um, very uh, accommodating and, and, and realizes that, that Guam truly appreciates the resources it gets and it doesn't go uh, uh, unexpended. It goes to very well programs, a lot of new programs, a lot of that collaboration, that camaraderie ship, and that's what it needs. And uh, we hope that that Team Guam will continue to be up there. I know, I know we were garnering over the top 100 and we were even climbing even further, but that's what it takes, you know? We chip away at it one game at a time, but we're gonna get there. So Madam Chair, I, I humbly yield uh, um, this uh, uh, public hearing back to you as my chairperson, but I also want to say uh, a really big thank you on behalf of all the folks that are here, including uh, the director and the deputy uh, from the administration showing their support and the minority leader, the vision that you also see, because we've gone through those games together as representatives uh, for Guam to see what GFA has done, not just for Guam, but for the world. And so Madam Chair, uh, back to you and thank you again for giving me this opportunity to uh, make this uh, bill uh, uh, realized. And I hope that we can get a committee report out soon. So I know it's really hard not to have it, I mean, to have it this session, but at least for the November session, I'm hoping the committee report will be there and that my colleagues can help support that effort because the resources and the investment of millions of dollars to help our children for generations to come, I think is key uh, in the development of making this a win-win for the international FIFA family and the Guam FIFA family. So, Madam Chair, can I say a few words before you go ahead? Yes, so to everyone who is in attendance. Uh, we're very honored to have guests from Malaysia to have FIFA here it is a pretty big deal. So we are very grateful for that. And we're grateful for and appreciative of all the hard work that uh, has been put in over the years by uh, Valentino Sangil and the others in the community that have been behind this all along and, and all the way. Um, it's done many good things for our community. The association has worked really hard. They've contributed a lot to our fields and to the community as a whole. And I will continue following up on that. Uh, you know, when I reread the section, when it talks about matching funds and it talks about the tax credits, uh, generally it's, it's tax credits that are uh, identified businesses by the association that then contribute. But uh, we'll, we'll continue to talk on this and find out where we're at and, and what the situation is just for clarity. Uh, but we do appreciate and recognize all that the Football Association has done for Guam. And again, we're very, very appreciative of it. So Madam with Chair, that, Madam Chair, uh, uh, Mr. Levine uh, had uh, something to add on. Can he go ahead and, and share his sentiments? He, he sure. had additional. Okay. Absolutely. Firstly, uh, thank you very much for, for having us here today. Uh, I think it's a big, it's a big uh, shift uh, of taking Guam football to a different uh, level or to the next level. Uh, I think it's also important to point out or to, to, to know that the government itself is supporting the Guam Football Association. Uh, Guam Football Association will need all the government support in order to go to the next level. And this is a big, big step from the Guam government itself, from the legislature uh, to, 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 to extend the lease. Uh, I know it's not easy uh, because as, as, as uh, Senator Tello mentioned earlier, it's hard to justify a 20 year lease. But we can assure you together with uh, the leadership of uh, Tino and GFA that these funds will be utilized the right way, uh, will be uh, focused on footballing infrastructure. And we just like to thank on behalf of the FIFA president, this is exactly what he wants, uh, having football infrastructure in small islands and more importantly, thanking government organizations like yourselves to support 
the Guam Football Association. This is very, very important collaboration because GFA alone, together with FIFA, will not be able to do anything without the government support. So this is very, very important. And I would like to thank every one of you all and greetings from Kuala Lumpur. Stay safe. Uh, it's tough times, but we'll get through it and hope to see you soon in Guam one of these days. Thank, Thank you. you very much for those uh, remarks. Yes. So with that, uh, the committee will continue to receive any written comments about today's virtual public hearing. Please address your written comments uh, or your written testimony rather to the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatnya Revitalization, Self-Determination and Regional Affairs and submit it to my email um, uh, office.senatorkelly at guamlegislature.org or to my office located on the second floor of the Guam Congress building. The committee uh, thanks everybody for their attendance, um, wishes everybody a good night, um, especially over there in Malaysia where there's a couple hours of difference. And it will now adjourn this virtual public hearing on board number 402-35-COR. Zuis Maasi, once again, for your attendance and participation. The time is now 6.30 exactly. <laughs>